Welcome everyone. My name is Kelsey Doherty and I'm the student conduct and accountability specialist at Fleming College and I support our residence department in multiple different areas, uh, including our residence life program. Um, and so today I wanted to just kind of take a little bit of your time to get started um, with Fleming and have a conversation about a couple of things that we think are important for you to know before you arrive in just a few weeks, which is really exciting for us and hopefully just as exciting for you. Um, in our space today, we have some of our, uh, my fellow colleagues in our, from our housing department. Um, who will be uh, chatting with you about some of our supports and our community um, and hopefully uh, we'll have some opportunities for some great, great question and answer period as well. Um, we encourage you to uh, send your questions down into the chat uh, and we'll respond as we can. Um, we do have someone monitoring our chat so they'll respond to you as quickly as possible. We're going to throw some links and things like that into the chat along the way as well uh, so you can click on them and get connected to some of the resources in our community. Um, and if you'd like to stay back after we stop recording, um, after about a half an hour of time, we're more than welcome to chat with anyone one on one um, or answer any questions verbally if you'd like to do that as well. All right, let's get started, folks. All right, so we're going to cover a couple areas. So some move in information supports in residence and orientation information. Um, so hopefully that's what you came to see today um, and we'll be able to uh, clear up most of your questions that you might have around residence. So in general, we're really super excited to get to know all of you and meet you. Um, we're really uh, amping up in the last couple of weeks to get ready for you. We're cleaning our buildings, making sure all of our um, spaces are prepped and ready and there's an exciting plan of events to get going here. Some of our student leaders are coming back to campus next week and we can't wait for them to join us and be able to um, train them up and be prepared for, uh, to have a great semesters ahead of us. So some things that we wanted to chat about around move in before we get started. Um, were some suggested items to bring. This is a really long list, so I'm not reading through this today, folks, but it is available as well on our webpage. But some things that we really wanted to highlight were some of the pieces of what you should be thinking about bringing um, and what maybe our residence is already providing to you. Um, so we don't want you to bring, you know, your own garbage can and things like that that would duplicate supplies that we already have available for you, our, our recycling bins, but we wanted to really highlight some of those important pieces. Um, we do encourage from on the suggested side uh, to bring your own uh, mini fridge if that's accessible to you. Um, just as uh, it's only one fridge for six folks to share, we want to make sure that you have space for some of your personal items as well. Um, so if you ever wanted to check this out, feel free to uh, jump into our web page that has a whole long list of all the things and suggested items to bring and what we provide to you in residence. If there's any questions regarding any of those um, items, please feel free to put them in the chat. On the flip side of that, we want to encourage you to kind of leave a couple things at home, folks. There's a couple things that we just aren't welcome in our community. Um, so wireless printers being one of them, and this is a question we get often, and I just wanted to highlight, you are allowed to bring your own printer, okay? Uh, but we need a cord with that printer here and, uh, for our Wi-Fi. The reason for that is the wireless printers do disrupt our uh, Wi-Fi uh, that you might need for things like your Netflix and your schooling and all the fun things you want to do outside of that. So please leave your wireless printers at home. Any questions around IT services, our IT support is also in this room today with us, and you're more than welcome to throw it in the chat and they'd be able to answer it to, for you. Candles, incense, things like that. Um, obviously a fire safety risk for us in our community. Beer bottles aren't a welcome item or any drinking paraphernalia. Illegal drugs or any cultivation equipment. Uh, large speakers, so we are a community. We wanna make sure that we're welcoming for everyone. Uh, loud speakers are not necessarily the most welcoming, but we want you to enjoy your time here. So please, um, we welcome you to have uh, a smaller speaker if that's more conducive for your listening. Um, extra furniture, so some things that we see on move-in day that we don't allow um, are things like massive beanbag chairs and extra dressers and things like that. If you have an accommodation request for, let's say, a mattress from a doctor, we're more than welcome to accommodate that, but we do need that in advance of move-in day. Um, so we'll talk about how to connect with one of our support services and what accommodations look like in a second, um, but please feel free to connect on extra furniture if it is a medical accommodation. Space use heaters obviously are another piece of our, our concern around fire safety. String lights and halogen lights are also fire safety. We, you know, we want you to stay fit. 
We have a, some great athletic spaces and uh, centers that you can get to. We don't want your be bench press here in residence. It's going to potentially cause a lot of damage in our residence community. We want to make sure we're not having that concern. Um, pets, we do accept pets if there's accommodation requests uh, through a medical accommodation. Um, so we do uh, ask that you process that through our housing services in advance and it's approved. Um, and of course, we don't want any weapons in our campus community um, either. So something to leave at home. So just kind of reminding ourselves of what not to bring along the way. And if there's any questions around any of those, again, throw them in the chat. So on move-in day, uh, we wanted to just take a second to, to kind of clear up any confusion, thoughts, or things like that, and more details will come out as well. Um, so you, many of you in, uh, in this space today um, have chosen uh, your move-in time slot, which is fantastic. We have a, a variety of different move-in time slots, um, from all the way from our early move-in option for some of our volunteers um, and folks that require an early move-in opportunity, all the way until the end of the, the long weekend. What we will have is most of our students will be moving in on Friday, um, Friday the 2nd. Um, that's our big move in day. So it's an exciting day. However, some folks aren't able to make it and that's more than okay. Um, so if you have not chosen your move in time slot, we do encourage you to log on to your housing portal um, as soon as possible and choose that time slot. We're looking to be able to assign folks time slots by next week if you haven't chosen one, just so we can make sure we have everything set and ready to go when you arrive. So when you leave uh, your home on move-in day, there's a couple things we encourage you to do. So when you're getting into your car and you're coming all the way to, to Peterborough or Lindsay um, to our residence department, we want to make sure that you check your email before you leave. We're gonna provide you a ton of resources and information um, on that last week right before you arrive. That's going to help your move in process have you as you've seen throughout the summer we've tried to communicate the best we can um, and provide some information and that really we want to keep that in critical information around move in until the very end if we possibly can you'll see on the screen here this lovely uh printed item that says route a building one newfoundland house um, that's a hanging tag that we encourage you to print out and place into your car dash it's going to help our team when you arrive direct you to where you need to be and, and really smooth make the process really smooth for you and your family there's also going to be a moving qr code and so we also encourage you to print that off if you'd like to do a quick check-in process it's all going to be included in that last email as well and ensure that you're also arriving at an appropriate time. So we want to make sure that you're coming 15 minutes in advance of your, your time slot so we can get you through a potential lineup of cars or something like that, and that you're here and ready to unload when it's your time. When you arrive on move-in day, you will be greeted by lots of different folks uh, directing you in different ways, and we want you to present your hanging tag on your dash if possible. Follow any directions that are provided to you um, and pick up your keys in our office space. We do encourage just students to enter into our office space on move in day to retrieve your keys. So all of your parents or your loved ones or your dog or your cat or whatever you brought on move in day aren't necessarily welcome in the office at that time just because we need to process folks really quickly. And so just you as the student moving into the space are here to grab your keys from the residence office. At that time, once you got your keys, it's your time and your family's time to start unloading. So you'll be able to do that within the specific amount of time provided and we'll communicate that as the move-in information comes. After that, we're gonna redirect your vehicle outside of our unloading zone um, and then everyone will be able to unpack and get comfortable into the space. After you move in, we also encourage you to think about things like connecting with your resources, taking a tour of Peterborough and Lindsay, and also um, with your family, maybe going to get some groceries if that's applicable. And then you get to say your goodbyes to your, your family or loved ones. And that's an exciting opportunity as well. Because um, you're here, you're part of our community now, and we want to welcome you in officially. And as much as we love your entourage that came with you, we also want to acknowledge that um, we're here to have some fun too, so they get to hit the road and get back to their lives too. So there's lots of fun stuff that's gonna come. So check your email around move-in day and make sure you read all the instructions that are provided to you.
before our move-in day, we really want you to think about uploading your, your one card. So hopefully by next Monday, if you have not done it already, you'll log on to our webpage and be, or the webpage for one card, and you'll upload your photo. The reason why this is important is your one card gives you lots of access to lots of things. If you don't have a one card, um, you may not be able to move into our residence, and that's not fun. Your residence gives their, this card gives you access to all of our residence doors that you need to get through. It also gives you things like food services, vending machines, laundry service and residence, your campus ID, access to athletic centers, printing, and many more things. So I encourage you to upload your photo if you haven't done this yet. The instructions are very detailed about what type of photo we're looking for as well on the one card website. Um, so please make sure you get that done as soon as possible. When you arrive, uh, you're going to get into your rooms and that's super exciting. You're gonna take a look around, make sure everything looks good and do what we call a bedroom inspection. This is gonna help you just kind of review anything. If there's a, a small paint chip, if there's a ding in the wall, anything like that, just to make sure that we have that all noted so that um, we, on your move-in day, so we can help you support that process or fix any uh, issues that might exist. Um, throughout the year, you might have a light bulb go out, or you might have a you might blow a, a breaker, or things like that. So we have our maintenance um, option as well, and this is all located on your housing portal um, to make your space the best possible space for you throughout the year. So I want to turn it over uh, to Sarah Romani, who's in our space today, um, to talk about some of the supports that we have um, in our campus community and our residence community that are going to help it be successful for you. Thank you, Kelsey. Hi everyone, my name is Sarah. I see some familiar names and familiar faces, but for those of you who I have not met or introduced myself to, I am the student development specialist with the residence team here at Fleming. Basically what that means is I am here to support you, provide case management, get you connected with services, um, and I'll go over all of that in a little bit. Um, but basically what I'm going to go through is the many, many, many supports both residents and campus has. Odds are, if you're uh, looking for a resource, looking for a program, looking to talk to someone, Fleming has, has it for you. So please do not feel afraid to reach out at any time and really take advantage of all of the resources and supports that we have right here, especially given that you're living on campus and it's all super accessible to you. Um, so if you haven't done so already, highly recommend that you download the Fleming mobile app because it is an easy way to reach out to all of these resources. You'll find everything on the app instead of scouring websites and Googling things. You can just open up your app. Um, lots of benefits to this. Of course, the resource tab. Uh, there's a little picture in the corner there of it. Um, but wellness resources, campus resources like counseling, athletics, uh, library. They put on a lot of good events. Um, one card community resources, all listed right there. All you have to do is click on it and it takes you right to um, the web page. And then there's also good ways to communicate with your community, with your residents, people in your program through the community page and through the chat there. So definitely download that. Take some time to, to get familiar with the app as well. And let us know if you have any questions about it. So here in residence, uh, you have a lot of support 24 seven. So there's always someone around to support you um, here at residence, whether that's throughout the day or throughout the night. So just to briefly go over what your residence staff team looks like. Um, you do have residence life mentors. So these are our student staff. Uh, we call them RLMs. If you've been to any other institutions or visited any friends, uh, other places call them like RAs, DONs, same role. They are your residence life mentors. You'll have one assigned to your floor. Some of you might be living with one, might be roommates with one. They live right in your community. They're your peer to peer support um, and they're always available for you. And then we have um, a group of office staff as well. So odds are you've probably already connected um, with some of our staff, they help you with your fees, um, getting your move in time slot connected when you're calling the residents main line. Those are the folks that you're talking to. So any questions um, about residence fees, payments, all of that, uh, that's who you connect with. We have dedicated ITs. We actually have Mike on our call um, helping answer questions in the chat today. 
So any issues with your one card throughout the year, uh, Wi-Fi in your room. Uh, if you're like me, I always have IT questions. So luckily we have Mike uh, right on our team, right in residence to help you out. And same with maintenance. If anything comes up, something goes wrong in your room, we have um, maintenance right, right in the building to, to respond to that in a, in a timely manner. We work really closely with campus security. So you will see campus security doing rounds throughout the night and down in the residence like office. Um, campus security's contact information is also posted in your rooms all over the buildings. Uh, you can dial them right from a yeah, campus phone and um, they're there to support you in an emergency or even in an emergency. Your residence life management team as well. So that includes myself and a few others who are also there to support you in many different ways. So just to go a little bit deeper into who your RLMs are, these will probably be the people that you're connecting with the most. Like I said, they're living right in your communities. Some of them might be in your classes. They are peer supports, but they um, are also staff. So a friendly face to talk to if you're feeling, you know, homesick, if you're having issues with your suite mates, if you just want to get connected with some services, don't really know where to start, just want someone to talk to, definitely reach out to your RLM. We also always have an RLM on duty. So throughout the night, again, there will be a number you can call um, to say you lock yourself out and you need to be let in. Uh, your RLMs can support with all of that and those numbers will also be posted. Um, around the residence and in your bedrooms. Um, and then they're also there to run some fun programming. Uh, we want you all to get really engaged. Again, we'll go over some opportunities for that in a bit, but you'll see your RLMs promoting and running events uh, throughout the year. So definitely look out for that and share with them if you have any good ideas as well. So student services, like I mentioned, we have many, many, many services um, on campus and it's all right here. So uh, counseling, uh, we have an on-campus doctor at both sites. So uh, if you live a few hours away and you can't get an appointment with your family doctor, visit our campus health services. They're right there, there's nurses as well. Um, student rights and responsibilities. Athletics, recreation, there's always a lot to get involved with, food services, indigenous student services. Um, and again, this can all be found on the app as well or on the website. So listing all of those resources, we definitely acknowledge that it can be overwhelming when you start. And sometimes we can realize, yeah, I should probably reach out for let's say tutoring, but you don't know where to start, don't worry. We have dedicated staff members to help you through all of that process uh, in residence. You guys have myself. Uh, so again, I am the student development specialist and I can help you get connected with whatever services you're needing. So if you find you're, you know, in week four and you're starting to struggle with a specific course, you want to get connected with tutoring, you can reach out to me. I can sit down with you. We can fill out the form together. I can send you any information. Um, my email is there. There will also be a referral form um, uh, that you can fill out in order to book an appointment with me. Um, if you need help getting a referral to counseling, if you're, you know, wanting to check out a space on campus, reach out. I can be your first touch point and then I can guide you uh, from there. And even if you're, again, you're just feeling homesick or, or uh, struggling a bit with the transition. I know this is a lot of people's time living on their own, first time living on their own. Reach out, uh, we are here to support you. And then on the campus side as well, so I work specifically in the residence with resident students, but we also have what we call student success coaches, and they are also available on campus. Um, if you're struggling at all with, uh, you know, should I drop this course, should I switch this course, um, anything academic wise, you can either reach out directly to the student success coaches um, or again, reach out to myself and I can get you connected one. But don't let um, not knowing where to start prevent you from getting the support. You can always just come down and chat with me and we can work it out together. Thanks, Sarah. Appreciate all that information about supports. I see so many questions going in the chat and I know Mike 
is diligently answering all the questions to the best of his ability. So patience on the question front sounds like there's some really exciting things. And hopefully as we work, continue to work through this content, some of your questions may be answered as well. Um, as I said at the beginning, we will definitely get all to all the answering of the questions. And if you want to stay back after we're done our presentation, you're more than welcome to too. Um, Speaking of supports in our campus community, we do have a set of community standards in our residence as well. And so this set of standards really highlights all of our expectations around um, how we kind of live in our community. So what those expectations are. Um, so some of those things, and I think I saw some questions coming in the chat around some of our what might be our resident standards. So things like um, what are our quiet hours and, and what the expectations are? How do we bring in guests and what are the expectations around get guests? All of this information is available on our webpage in our student handbook as well. And so we do encourage you before coming to take a gander at that. Next week, we are going to send a, all, a lot of this information again. Again, we're going to continue to send this you all the content we can uh, over email throughout the summer. And uh, hopefully you'll be able to take a look at our handbook and our community standards within it. But the goal is really to create a safe space for everyone. And so speaking of safety, I wanted to highlight a couple uh, pieces around safety in our campus community. So at Fleming, we also we have two apps. So Sarah highlighted an app earlier around engagement. So being able to engage in our community and have get connected to friends and events and all the cool things happening. And then we have our safety app, which is equally as important, right, um, in our community. And what this app provides is lots of resources around campus safety. Um, so how to contact our campus safety team, how to acknowledge when you need support, um, even how to get a direct line to our um, our emergency services in the community as well. And so we hope that you download both apps because both apps are equally as important um, so that you can keep yourself safe in our community and engaged as well. So our campus safety team on campus um, highlights on a couple of things. So we have, um, as I said, in the app, it has a direct line as well through the app, but you can always just call our folks on extension. So um, on our Peterborough campus, we do have some phones within suites um, and on our Lindsay campus, you're more, they, they have a direct line as well. And so we'll provide all these extensions and all these numbers when you come to campus. So you don't have to be diligently putting those into your phones right now by any means. Um, but our campus security team uh, provides emergency responses, crisis needs, reporting of crimes in our campus community or, or, or first aid. But they also provide things like safe walks. So if you want, it's, a, it's maybe late at night and you don't wanna walk out to your car independently, Totally fair, our campus security team's here for you. Also, let's get real, some of you folks in this space will lock yourselves out of your rooms during your residence time. And so our campus security team is here to open a door for you and be a friendly space. And um, I promise they do it all the time. It's without judgment and it's totally okay. Somebody here on day one will have to get their door unlocked and that's totally okay. Other things that are really fun services that they provide in our community. If you your car dies in the middle of the winter because the battery's dead, they're gonna boost it for you. So they're a resource in our community um, and not folks that are here just to patrol. They're really active, engaged members um, to support you with any of your inquiry. They also support our parking um, as well in our community. And speaking of parking, we encourage you um, to get your parking passes online and register for that process as soon as possible. Um, there is, it's all an online system. So please go to our parking services webpage to be able to process that. Um, and you'll, what you'll do is you'll register your vehicle. You'll choose the permit type that you need. The only overnight parking that we have in our campus community is in the residence parking lot. So you guys are lucky. Um, you get to register for our residence parking. Um, it is a cashless um, payment method. So online um, with Visa or MasterCard. Um, and you can check out all of that information through the parking and min webpage. So check that out at your, your convenience, but we encourage you to get your parking passes as soon as possible. Um, to be able to support your transition into our community. So that's really around our supports on campus. And before we uh, move on again, continuing the questions in the chat, um, and we'll come back to any questions around supports on campus if we didn't get them answered before the end of this chat today. So before uh, 
you when you get here, we want you to get involved, folks. Okay, so we got a lot of supports happening. There's lots of things, fun things happening. Um, our residence community does have an opportunity to get engaged through residence council and lots of events as well. So we do encourage you when you come chat with your RLM about what residence council is all about. Gives you an opportunity as a student in our community to get connected, make events, leadership opportunities, and uh, really build your your space in our community and make your own um, this a home for you. Um, so please connect and get involved and, and attend events and 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 think clubs and groups on campus and and chat with our student associations or athletics and all the great resources that Sarah highlighted earlier. Um, but make sure you make your time of residence. And by making your time of residence, I really encourage you to get involved in our orientation weekend events that are happening on the Labor Day weekend. So I wanted to highlight at a high level some of those events that we have going on. So on Friday the 2nd, we have our community meetings. This is an opportunity to do a deeper dive um, into some of those residents community standards, all the resources, um, what residence is about, doing a bit of a tour of our community and things like that, and getting to know the folks that are living around you, right? You are part of our community by the, when you move in, and we wanna make sure you know all of that, the folks that are around you and get connected. We also have a welcome to residence event as well on the Friday. So please encourage you to engage with that. Um, and more details will come out um, as you, we get closer. It's just a bit of a teaser right now. Um, on the Saturday, we have a community pancake breakfast. Um, community trips will be occurring as well, and midnight community dodgeball tournament. So we do um, ask that you know come engage in all these events that we got going on. Um, our student association is running a, C a trip to the Toronto CNE. So if you're not familiar with that, we'll um, some links and resources will be available about what our Toronto CNE is. Um, but a big uh, fair that happens in Toronto um, and an opportunity for you to engage with some of your new friends, hopefully by Sunday and, and get out to a trip um, to Toronto. And then our Monday is our Ready, Set, Fleming Day. So our peer mentors in the community will be engaging in some activities to kind of get you ready for the next day. Because the next day, is day number one of your time at Fleming um, from an academic standpoint. And then there'll be lots of orientation events that our student life team will be running on campus as well through the first week, second week, and, and, and ongoing throughout September to kind of get you slowly integrated into Fleming College. Um, so lots of great opportunities to get engaged and we encourage you to connect um, throughout the time uh, with all of these events on the Labor Day weekend. So that's all we have. I know there's lots of questions in the chat and we'll, Sarah and Mike and myself are welcome to stay back and, and chat one on one with anyone as well. And we can do some breakout rooms if someone would like to have a one on one chat and we'll catch up if you wanted to stay, hang out with us and wait for your an your question to be answered. We can always verbally answer them instead of Mike furiously uh, typing away into the chat. Um, we do encourage you to email us any of your questions as well. Um, this shouldn't be our last point of contact before move in day. Email residents at FlemingCollege.ca and we'll get back to you very quickly or give our phone a call if you'd like, if you prefer that as well. We do want to kind of send us a, a subtle reminder to continue to check your Fleming emails, not just before, but while you're here. It's going to be our main mode of communication with you throughout your entire Fleming career. So please check your Fleming email, not your Gmail account or your Hotmail account or whatever you else you got going on. Your Fleming email is where we're going to send all your critical information. So thanks everyone for joining in today. I really appreciate uh, all the great questions getting thrown out there and for you folks to be engaged and excited to come with us. Um, and I really hope uh, that it's gonna be a fantastic move in day. Hopefully the sun is shining um, and we're excited to welcome you into our residence community. So thanks for joining today and we're gonna stop the recording.